Today in our 2013 Ford F-150, we'll be having a look at and installing the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs for the rear axle, part number F2525. Right, here's what our airbags look like installed. These airbags can operate anywhere between 5 and 100 PSI of air pressure. These airbags have a load leveling capacity of up to 4,800 pounds. You still are limited by what the factory specifications for gross vehicle weight rating are. If we're towing a trailer that has a very high tongue weight and is bringing down the back end of our truck, this will help raise it back up to a factory ride height. The reason we want our truck at a factory ride height when we have a heavy load in the bed of it or towing a heavy trailer is that it does improve the handling characteristics of our truck. We have increased steering ability and increased braking ability. Also will cause less tire wear on your vehicle as well. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is determine what our factory ride height is on our truck with no weight in the bed of it. This will give us an idea where to compare to. We want the ride height to be at the factory levels once we have the airbags installed. So we'll measure from the center line of our wheel up to our wheel molding here. See, we're right about 40 inches. So we'll record this measurement and compare it after we have the weight in the bed of the truck. We'll do the same for the front right now. Okay, we're about 40 inches here too. So our truck is sitting perfectly level right now. So we'll record these measurements and now we're gonna put our weight in the bed and see how the truck changes. Okay, now we have about 1,400 pounds of weight in the bed of our truck to simulate having a heavy load in the bed or towing a heavy trailer that has a high tongue weight. Take our measurements again. We're about 36 and a half inches in the rear now. So that means we fell down about three and a half inches, which is a significant drop from the factory ride height. Now we'll go measure the front and see how that changes as well. The front's about 40 and a half. So that came up about a half of an inch. Now this is important because when our back end comes down, our front end raises as well. When our front end raises, we have less weight over the front tires, which means we have less steering and less braking ability. Also, our headlight angle is going to change too. Instead of pointing down towards the row where they need to be, they'll be aimed up more towards the trees and can potentially blind oncoming drivers. Also, our alignment on our front tires changes a little bit too. When the front end raises, they start angling out like this, giving us more positive camber. This positive camber will cause more tire wear on the outside edge of our tires right here, not giving us a full contact patch all the way across the tread. This affects our steering, our braking, and our tire wear overall. Something we don't wanna have when we're towing our heavy trailer or have a heavy load in our bed on a consistent basis. We wanna be at the factory ride height so we have the factory braking, steering, and handling abilities on the truck. All right, now that we have our airbags installed, our weight's still in the bed of our truck, we'll double check our measurements and see if we're back at factory ride height. All right, so we're at 40 inches in the rear, which is exactly where we were for factory ride height with no weight in the bed of the truck. Now we're gonna check the front and see where we're at there. Okay, we're back at 40 inches in the front too, so that means we're exactly level, factory ride height, so our handling characteristics have been returned to our vehicle. Now we'll take the truck out on our test course. On the left side of the screen, you'll see without the airbags installed, once we have a heavy load in the bed of the truck, how poorly the suspension works as we are going around corners, doing evasive maneuvering, and going over bumps. You see how unsettled the suspension is and how it's not really working how it's supposed to. On the right side of the screen, you'll see with the airbags installed, how much smoother it is going around corners and doing evasive maneuvers. We have a lot less body roll in the vehicle now. And when we go over bumps, you'll notice how much more travel the suspension is actually able to do. We're not hitting our bump stops anymore. The suspension's doing its job and absorbing all the bumps and uneven terrain that we encounter. And I can tell you, just as riding in a passenger in the vehicle, you can feel a dramatic difference as far as ride quality because the suspension is doing its job now and is not limited to the amount of travel it has. It is a much smoother ride, which provides you the safety and comfort that you're looking for when you have a heavy load in the bed of your truck or you're towing a heavy trailer. Okay, we have our vehicle raised by the rear axle and supported by it. 
Now we're going to remove our rear wheels. Now that we have our wheels removed, we need to remove our factory bump stops. There's a 13 millimeter bolt that goes straight up from the bottom above the axle that holds it in place. You'll need to use an extension and a deep well socket. Okay, we won't need our bump stop anymore, but we will need the bolt that secures it to the frame. Okay, this is our frame bracket here that our airbag assembly will attach to. This is the bolt hole where the bolt that held our bump stop in place will go through and back to the original location where we removed it. We'll need to hold this up in line with where our bump stop is and measure off if your vehicle has fender liners where this bracket will sit and then we'll have to trim out this area of the fender liner and we'll give ourselves a little bit of room on either side too so that our bracket will sit flush against the frame. Okay, I'm gonna use a rotary tool in order to cut this out. You can use a sharp utility knife if you want, but if you're using a rotary tool, make sure you put on a pair of safety glasses. Here are our holes in the frame. We're gonna be inserting hardware through to secure a bracket as well. Okay, now we'll bolt our bracket in with the bolt that held the bump stop in originally to the bump stop hole. Okay, we can snug that bolt on up now. We have two additional bolt holes here for our bracket. The thing is, there is no nut on the inside of the frame. That's where this handle nut comes into play. We'll insert this through a hole on the inside of the frame. The bolt will screw into this, and this will get sandwiched against the inside of the frame, holding our bracket nice and tight. We'll bend it about a 45 degree angle, just like so, making sure that this end faces towards the handle. So we'll take our handle nut, stick it between our brake lines and into the hole, leaving our handle sticking out. So I have the handle nut in my hand on the inside of the frame. Just line up the hole and screw our bolt in until it starts. Make sure it actually catches. Okay, now we'll do the same thing for the other one. Okay, now we'll use a 916 socket and we'll snug down these bolts. With them snug down, we'll torque them to the amount specified in the instructions. Now that we have those bolts torqued down, we want to verify that the handle nuts aren't touching our brake lines. If they are, just bend them out of the way. We have plenty of clearance around these now. Okay, now we'll take one of our airbags, take off the covers over the stud, and the plug where our fitting goes. Take our upper bracket here, drop it on over, put our flange nuts over, and we'll screw our fitting in. Now we'll tighten up our fitting a little bit until the thread sealant engages. Okay, that's good right there. Now you wanna have your fitting either face this direction or this direction. Doesn't really matter which way. We use our 916 socket again, and we'll tighten down these nuts. We'll torque those nuts on down. Now we'll flip our airbag assembly on over. Now if our vehicle is two-wheel drive, we'll need one of these spacers and a long bolt. If it's four-wheel drive, we don't need a spacer, and we'll use a short bolt. Ours is four-wheel drive, so we're gonna be using the short bolt. Take our bracket here, and we'll just loosely 
finger tighten this bolt. That way we can still pivot our bracket as needed. Okay, now we'll take our airbag assembly, sit it on top of our leaf springs, make sure our upper bracket here slides into our frame bracket. Our frame bracket has three holes in it. We'll be using the bottom two, so we'll just push our bracket on down till the holes line up, take one of our bolts, Make sure the head's facing the airbag. There it goes. Put the second one in as well. Just wiggle it until it goes in. All right, so we have the two in on this side now. Make sure we have the two in on the other side. Okay, with our four bolts in place, we'll thread on our nuts. Okay, now we'll use a 916th wrench to hold the bolt still and a 916th socket to tighten up the nut. Do the same for all four. Now we'll torque our bolts. You can find the specifications in the instructions. Now you'll want to make sure that your airbag is straight up and down and not leaning towards the back of the truck or the front of the truck. You can adjust that just by simply sliding your lower bracket along the leaf spring until it's straight up and down. Now we'll take our U-bolt, go up underneath the leaf spring and through the holes on our bottom bracket Thread on our nuts. Do the same for the front one. Now we'll start to snug these nuts on down. Okay, when we tighten these bolts down, we wanna make sure we tighten them as evenly as possible. Once we have them tight, we'll torque them the amount specified in the instructions. little trick on this one. If you use a pry bar, you can pry the bed of the truck up a little bit off the axle. Then you can get in there with a torque wrench. All right, now we can finish tightening down this bottom bolt on our airbag to the bottom bracket. And we'll torque it down as well. We did this one last because this is the one that has a little bit of adjustment in it for moving our airbag to make sure it's straight up and down. Okay, now that we got our airbag installed on the driver's side, we'll repeat the same process for the passenger side. Okay, now we're gonna take our no drill bracket, take off the cap, take off the nut, drop on a flat washer, Stick it through the hole. Drop on another flat washer. Reinstall the nut. Do the same for the other one. Now we use two 13 millimeter wrenches or sockets. Just snug these down a little bit and replace our caps. Now we'll take our no drill bracket, stick it up on our hitch and secure it with our zip ties here. Okay, that gives us a nice solid mount for our air lines. Now we'll take one end of our air line tubing here. You see how it's crushed a little bit and we don't have a square cut? We'll use an air line tubing cutter, which we have available on our website as part number F9009. And we'll get a nice square cut, like so, right there. Now we'll plug it into our fitting on our airbag. We'll just push it in until it stops, and we'll pull back and make sure it's secure. It's not going anywhere. Now we'll route this to the rear of the vehicle, to our inflation valve, and make sure that we avoid any moving parts and sources of heat while we do this. So our airline comes up out of our bag. We went through this cross member here for our bed support, where the raised section of our bed corrugation is. You can slide the airline tubing through there. Went above the cross member here where our spare tire is located. We took that down earlier so you have a better look at what's going on. You don't need to remove it in order to do the install. Went over this other cross member where it drapes down right here. Now we'll cut off our excess. And we'll install it into the one for our passenger side since we're you did the passenger side one first. 
push it in, make sure it's secure. Now we'll do the same process for the driver's side. Okay, we went through our bed corrugation in a similar fashion. Our line comes out right through here over our frame, over our cross members, clearing all moving parts. And we have it secured to a zip tie here. That way it clears our spare tire tool access port. So we can raise and lower our spare tire without damaging our airline tubing. Now we'll measure off how much we need. Make sure we have a square cut. And plug it into our inflation valve. Pull back, make sure it's secure. Now we'll add some air to our airbags and check for leaks. We'll use some soapy water and spray all of our fittings and check for bubbles. If we see bubbles, we know we have a leak. If we don't, we know we're good. Okay, we got our other side fitting spray down too. I don't see any bubbles. We already double checked the ones at the back for our inflation valves. No bubbles there either, so we're good to go. Okay, now we'll put back on our tires. And that completes our look at an installation of the Firestone Ride Right Air Helper Springs for the rear axle, part number F2525 on our 2013 Ford F-150. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.